for Alex Ferguson, obviously played a big part in, in your career. Um, I suppose um, for, for, for fans of football, whether you're a United, United fan or not, you look at what Alex Ferguson achieved, and whilst he was achieving it, it was brilliant. After he retired, you, you look back upon his achievements, and they become even greater for what he did. What was the one thing that you'll take away from him managing you? What's the, the one, you know, if you th thought about something that he instilled, a value he instilled in you, what would it be? There's, there's too many to mention. But I, I'll be, I have any desire. Like he'd been managing by the end, like 26, 27 years. He was still first in. He was still last out training ground. Because there was a desire, there was a, a belief in what he was doing. There was a work ethic um, that he didn't need to talk about. You just see it. Like every day you come in, his car's there. You think, oh, has he got him before me again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like, but, but that's something that just rubs off on people. You haven't always got to be told, you haven't always got to be preached to sometimes. Just seeing someone do something day in, day out, relentless, is, is something that people feed off. And I think that's what the, the squad will in my time, definitely like, when he, didn't, when he wasn't at a training session, I say it to Jamie sometimes, because I'm watching that, but if he's not at a training session, which would have been a handful of times in the whole 13 years I was there, the session dr drops a little bit in terms of intensity and maybe the quality a little bit. Someone wouldn't see it just standing there, but it, the players, you just know. When he's there, and half the time he's on his phone making bets. On <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, he's not even like, taking any care of what's going on, but he's just his presence to be there was enough. And so there's, there's loads of stuff. And he, he, he sometimes he wouldn't even talk about football. Uh, I remember we, we were all on the bikes. We had a big game. I forget what game it was. We had a massive game. And... and um, on the Friday, everyone used to be on bikes in the, in the gym, about 22, 25 bikes, the whole team, big screen, watch all the stats come through from games and training and whatnot, all there, just 20 minutes, turn your legs over before every session. All of a sudden, a, a, a trail of like men just kind of coming into the gym, lining up in front of us. It's like, who are these geezers, man? What's going on? What? Everyone's sitting there going, who are these guys, man? And then all of a sudden the manager comes out and says, listen, these guys have been underground for about a month. Remember the Chilean miners that got yeah. oh, underground? Yes. He brought them over <laughs> after and made them come there because we had a sponsor with a Chilean wine company who had a connection out there. He's a wheeler and dealer, so he knows how to move in them, in them areas. And he got them over and they were standing there in front of us and was like, what the, what's going on? What <laughs> and he was like, if uh, this is their story, T talked about it a little bit and that was it. They went out, done pictures and whatnot. The next day of the game, he said, I've done my team talk yesterday. Just go out there and play. If you can't work hard and give me everything you've got, bearing in mind what you listened to on the floor yesterday, you shouldn't be here. And we all went out there and smashed someone about three or four nil. <laughs> but that he didn't he didn't push our buttons by shouting and bawling sometimes. He'd, he'd, he'd just he'd bring different things to the table that you'd sit there and go, wow. I think also that what you said to us, the way he managed you, was it when you were playing Chelsea or that? Saturday and you knocked on your hotel room on Friday night. Yeah, like, we played like, yeah, like he just knew how to manage people, man. He was just a great, like, he's a delegator, which was great. He'd let other people manage areas. But like, in terms of just knowing characters, and we were playing Liverpool on the on the Saturday, and if you got a knock on your door in the morning, you knew there was something wrong. And my door knocked. Went to the door, opened the door, and said, What do you want? And he went, This is on. He came in and I said, Ah, oh, you, you can't not play me today. It's Liverpool. I have to play. Like, I've just come back from injury. He's going, you injury. I want you ready. I want you fit and everything. But I said, Gaffer, you can't. I was screaming and shouting at him. And he was going, listen, just listen to me. I need. We got Chelsea, Chelsea on Tuesday in the Champions League. That's where I need you. You love it playing there. You're brilliant there. They they hate you. You you thrive under that pressure. You'll get us a result. And by the time he walked out. I was shaking his hand saying, this guy's been mad. <laughs> <laughs> he, that's the way he was. He could just cajole you into just like... And then in the end, I go in the change room that, that morning uh, for the game against Liverpool, and I'm going to everyone, come on, good luck. Except for where's before. I might have walked in there, depressed, going, this is a joke, I hope you get beat 2-0. <laughs>